Hello everyone, and welcome to my Coronation Street official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Next week on Coronation Street, Carla Connor will be disturbed, and Firestarter Hope Stape might have struck again. However, after Bethany Platt's horrific cosmetic surgery experience in Turkey, her family is making every effort to get her back to Weatherfield. David is the one who informs Shona that Gail has decided to sell the house and has taken out a bridging loan to cover Bethany's medevac travel home subsequently. While everyone waits tensely for Bethany to return from Turkey, Daniel Osborne confides in Ken Barlow that he fears he is the cause of her body image issues. When Bethany is eventually taken to the ICU, Daniel pays her a visit, but Sarah makes it obvious he is not welcome. Does Bethany wish to meet with him? A tearful Bethany assures Gail that she will repay her in the meantime. Simultaneously, having just returned from Thailand, Eileen Grimshaw was astounded to find her ex-boyfriend Jesse Chadwick getting out of a cab. When Gail returns to the street, she is taken aback to find Jesse. A shocked Eileen is informed by Gail that she and Jesse first met in Thailand years ago. As Jesse claims he needs to verify Gail is okay, she ushers him into number 8 leaving the Platts bewildered by his entrance. As Adam Barlow and Daniel are debating Damon Hayes' secret wealth, Jesse says he knows him from Sarah's wedding photos. Shona insisted that Sarah and David sit down and have a conversation with Jesse when they met him in the cafe. Will they consent? Later, over a pint, Jesse catches up with Steve and reveals the true reason he's here. As this is going on, Adam contacts Sarah from the factory and admits that although Damon volunteered to cover Bethany's medical expenses, he erased his message from her phone. Sarah contacts Damon in jail later. Elsewhere, Shona asks Nick Tilsley to find out where he stands with Toya Habib. Whether Toya likes it or not, they need to communicate, Nick tells her over the phone at Victoria Court. Additionally, in Weatherfield, Carla's day takes a turn for the worst when Sally Metcalf acknowledges that Sarah is in Turkey and Betsy Swain discloses to a significant client that she is in court for ABH. Meanwhile, Carla meets Tom, the father of the boy she knocked down, in court. Returning to the factory, the client was not overly impressed. Carla, not knowing that Tom has followed her home from court and is observing her supervising a delivery, lets her frustration out on Betsy and Sarah. She seems surprised to see Tom there, clearly angry. Later, after her ordeal, Carla is left perplexed by a touching encounter with Lisa. Has Lisa experienced it as well? The teenager is overjoyed when Carla buys Betsy a coffee in the cafe the next day and verifies that she can get her job back. Carla then recommends to Lisa that they have a conversation. Hope continues to vape covertly in the meanwhile, threatening to alert their parents if Ruby finds out. Unaware of this, Cassie Plummer promises Hope and Ruby at number 9 that they will band together for Fizz Dobbs' benefit. Mrs. Crawshaw visits Fizz, Tyrone, and Hope at the end of the week to discuss her recent transgressions. Hope persuades everyone that she has stopped vaping, and she is devastated to hear from Mrs. Crawshaw that she can go back to school. Hope stealthily removes her vaporizer from the sideboard after leaving, but Evelyn Plummer calls her back to assist with the business, she quickly leaves without observing a curl of smoke emerging from the drawer as she tucks the vaporizer back into the sideboard. Has Hope, the fire starter, struck again since Ruby is expected home from school? In addition, Kit Green calls DS Lisa Swain after downloading data from Joel Deering's laptop and discovering horrifying things. Afterwards, in the cafe, Dee Dee Bailey tells Kit that she called the vacation company in the wedding location, and it looks like Joel has already returned their deposits. Watchers of Coronation Street think they know Mason Radcliffe's future in Weatherfield after seeing him for the first time since he was freed from a juvenile detention facility. The actor playing the role, Luca Tulin, was accused with possessing a knife and was released initially. This summer, he went back to the cobbles. Watching Liam Connor succumb to the vicious bully from Weatherfield High and his gang, which included Dylan Wilson, Liam's pal, devastated viewers of the ITV soap opera. Mason threatened the terrified adolescent with a knife during one of these savage bullying episodes. Despite opposition from Sean Tully, Maria, and Gary Windass, Mason was swiftly adopted by Stu Carpenter upon his return to Weatherfield following his initial release. 
Along with being closer to Betsy Swain, D.S. Lisa Swain's daughter, upon his return, the troublemaker quickly turned against him, forcing him back inside after robbing a client of her phone from their bag at Speed Doll and accusing him of doing it. But in the episode that aired on Wednesday night, Mason was back on the cobbles following Liam's admission that Betsy was the one who stole from Speed Doll. Betsy was not happy with Dylan, and Mason himself showed up just as a worried Liam arrived to find Mason being released. According to the Manchester Evening News, Gary, who was out at the pub with Maria, received a quick SMS. Sean and the two of them ran over to Victoria Gardens, where Gary pushed Mason up against the gate and made threats. Just then, Stu Carpenter happened to walk by and intervened. Back at Speed Doll, Stu gave Mason permission to return to work and expressed regret to the youth for not believing in his innocence from the start. Supporters of Coronation Street conjecture that Mason has a future in Weatherfield and that this is his redemption arc. Star of Coronation Street Sue Cleaver has disclosed that she became pregnant at the age of 17 after being promised by an older man. After spending the summer on the West End, Sue, who portrays Eileen Grimshaw, is making her way back to the cobbles. She talked to the Mirror about her traumatic past, she claimed that when she was a teenager and experienced being taken advantage of by older partners, her insecurities started. The actress lived in a bedsit after eloping with a sailor at the age of 16, lost her virginity to an older boy, and became pregnant at the age of 17 after falling in love with a 35-year-old man, the renowned actress remarked, My first sexual experiences were with someone who was four or five years older than me. I looked for love, validation, and acceptance in all the wrong places. That would just be unimaginable now, but back then it wasn't. I was lost like many teenagers, but it was no one's fault and my wonderful parents always did their hardest for me. Mental health is a topic of discussion these days, but when I was that age, we had no idea what it was, and I was miserable. I'd never want to go back in time to that period. Sue, who has been a mainstay on Coronation Street for 25 years, is 60 years old. She is also a familiar face on Loose Women. However, in anticipation of the publication of her honest and poignant new memoir, A Work in Progress, she is now telling her experience for the first time. There were one-night stands and partners. Oh, if I do this, they will love me, I told myself. I was always looking for a way to fit in, the woman remarked. Really, it was tragic, and thinking about it today makes my heart hurt. My teenage years are tangled up in a knot of shame. I was just looking around for someone who could cheer me up. Because I was unable to manage my own well-being. I so started acting very promiscuous. During her time at school, Sue made bad choices that led to a downturn in her life, including hitchhiking and traveling home alone at night. She was dating when she was 15, but she quickly broke up with him for his elder brother, a Navy man. She left school at 16 without a diploma and traveled to Plymouth to share a bedsit with him. Sue finally moved back to Manchester to live with her parents because she was lonely and bored. But in a nearby wine bar, she mixed with an older clientele and soon discovered she was 17 years old and pregnant by a man twice her age. Again, that was somebody who was way older than me and took advantage, Sue says. Now it's appalling to think of myself at that young age in that situation with men who should know better. Sue made the decision to get an abortion after realizing she wasn't ready to be a mother, and she kept the whole thing a secret from everyone. She says, I was in complete chaos. After a while, I told my mother, saying, this has happened, I'm going to the hospital on this date, can we not tell dad, and asked for a lift. We may not have spoken about it again, but I made that decision. We didn't know how to, I believe. My father was unaware of it. I remember thinking how strong I was. I simply lobbed on and took care of things. Sue left for Canada at the age of 17 to work as a nanny before returning to the UK to attend theater school. It was there that she fell in love with her first significant boyfriend. He was a really lovely guy but he was a grown-up and although I was 23, emotionally I was still a kid, says Sue. There were many issues, and I believe the majority of them arose from the fact that he was well-established, having a business and a job, and what financial contribution did I make? Completely nonsensical. Even at that young age, it inspired me to swear that I would never, ever allow myself to be financially independent. After nine years, Sue wed actor James Quinn, and their now 28-year-old son Elliot was born. 
With roles in TV hits like Dinner Ladies and Band of Gold, Sue's career took off. In the 2000s, she landed the character of Corey's fearless cab driver Eileen Grimshaw, and she has been a fan favorite ever since Dot Sue's first marriage failed, but she fell in love again, and she is now married to Brian Owen, a lighting technician, and they live in Manchester. She believes that by courageously sharing her past, others would be able to see how resilient she really is. She also hopes to encourage other women to see their value and wave goodbye to self-doubt with her soon-to-be-published book. When I look back at my teenage self, I just want to give her a big hug, she thinks. It was all a part of my journey to become the person I am now, though. Oh God, I became independent and resilient. Not all of the solutions are with me. I am still developing. Since I'm human and people are inherently messy and prone to overanalyzing things, I sincerely hope that my book will be helpful to any woman who is going through a period in her life where she feels helpless and invisible. We're all struggling along, trying our hardest, and I just want every woman to realize how much she has to contribute.